Welcome everybody, this is Denny with Why Is This True and today Carl and I are going to do another channeling session, this time with Jimmy Seville. Carl Morlison and I have been doing it, uh, a series of channelings with uh, notable figures, some people that are, that are uh, well known, some that are a little bit more obscure. Uh, in this case, it's gonna, today we're going to do Jimmy Seville, who probably a lot of people in the US have never heard of him, but in the UK he's quite a famous fellow. And I will be reading a, uh, a, um, a bio from Wikipedia about Jimmy Seville to kind of uh, lay the, the context here. So in this instance, we did do ha we did uh, Carl did have to uh, checked on Jimmy, found out that he was not in the light. He was an earthbound spirit. We did a spirit rescue, and what was unusual in this case is the amount of time between the rescue and his availability f for doing something like this. So normally. Um, you know, we're not going to find the situation nor normally, at least from my experience so far, there's been several days that would have to um, go by uh, between the spirit rescue and the actual interview. So uh, welcome, Carl. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to, 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 to talk with our viewers a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and read the, um, the bio, and then we'll get started. So thanks for joining me, Carl. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, this gentleman is pretty typical of a lot of humans that when they transition don't make it to the light right away. And that delay can go on for many years. And there are many people I have done spirit rescues for who have been out decades and longer. Uh, I offer the service to people to check on their loved ones. And I, I do that at no charge, but I do ask that before they ask me to check that they're willing to follow through and pay me for my time to do the spirit rescue so I see that they're in the light because I, I don't want that burden. And there, there's more people that I can help personally in the world at the moment. I do a lot of group work, but this, this needs a lot of personal attention in some cases to really be powerful enough to, to shift things that are serious. Many people have uh, a huge um, level of spirit attention 
for a variety of reasons. And just being emotionally impaired, having a long health struggle, dying suddenly, dying without any kind of preparation for what might happen next, states of uh, non-belief, which is more and more common these days as we have a, a, an increasingly secular society, people think when they die, that's going to be it. And they're surprised when their consciousness persists. But everything may go dark <laughs> because they've lost all their senses. So if you can imagine suddenly having no eyes, no ears, no ability to feel anything because there's no sensory apparatus, you're in a, in a complete darkness and absence of stimuli. So this, this is very disorienting, confusing, and unpleasant. And the mind itself can be altered and limited not all the memory being attacked, for, for example. So there's, there's a lot of problems that people face when they don't have the preparation to recognize some outreach from the light, which always comes. And it comes for everyone, no matter who they are or what they've done. The whole idea of people being directed into a hell is a scare tactic used by a corrupting religion to make us afraid, make us fear death. And of course, then we fear life and many things in life because that's hanging over our heads always. Well, there are some bad things that can happen. And the, the, the bad thing is getting stuck in between here and the heavenly realm, the higher astral plane. And Carl, can I, can I interrupt just for a second? Yeah. Because this might be a good opportunity to discuss another myth as far as I understand it is that amongst the light worker community you'll see this repeated uh, pretty frequently now is that there's actually uh, a warning against going into the light because it creates a repeating uh, uh, incarnation cycle that's not wanted so that you're going to be you know forever condemned to uh, reincarnation cycles where you know you go into the light you're captured in the light and then you're forced to reincarnate back into the earth and you'll never escape and that's kind of like I, I don't know if I'm uh, describing that accurately, but I've I've heard that come up amongst some light workers pretty pretty often, and they they consider it a trap. So they're they're always counseling people like, well, when you die, don't go into the light, because then you're going to get trapped, and you're gonna you're gonna be forced to reincarnate again without your memory, and na 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 na, and they go through all this. Could you talk about that too? Yes, uh, unfortunately, this is disinformation that has deliberately been instilled through mind control programming to make people fear the light and to misrepresent what happens. In actuality, we have all chosen to be here. We have chosen to incarnate. And for most of us, it is a reincarnation. So we leave the loving arms of creator with full awareness and access to creator and creator's love to come down to this sorry place. We, we choose this. And we choose it willingly because we know that it's of interest to us personally, as well as creator, for this human experiment to be successful. We come in as light workers, warriors for the light, to advance the cause and see what we can do to help elevate humanity. In the process of doing it, we do incur karmic wounding, karmic debts and obligations. This creates a burden, and the burden grows with every incarnation where we don't get sufficient healing. So there's a germ of truth that coming here has problems and causes problems for us. But we do continue to choose that anyway. Because we know in the end, we will eventually heal it all, every bit of it, and elevate humanity far beyond what we can do now as physical beings. So the opposition we face is dark spirits and extraterrestrials both. Those beings keep people earthbound when they die. They're the ones holding us back. 
if we could return to the light for a refresher in between each incarnation and not have that extra wounding and extra suffering from p potentially years and years of being tormented in the lower astral by the dark spirits and the extraterrestrial spirits who are behind this campaign to make the light the bad guy, we would do much better and we'd heal quicker and the cause would advance more rapidly. So this, this is a misdirection and a misinterpretation of, of what happens. We, we always want to grow and advance and we do so by going back to the light and coming in again with a fresh restart. Yes, we have old karmic baggage that we pick up and have to contend with, but that's part of the learning for us. And it needs to happen for us to truly grow into our full status as independent extensions of creator's consciousness with autonomy and authority from our free will and free agency. This is the nature of what we're doing here. This is a new paradigm. Civilizations heretofore have always been under creator's wing and highly aware of it and not given that full autonomy. And having that autonomy has led to some people going astray. And it started with the angels and, and then that corrupted humanity and other civilizations. They corrupted the other bad ETs who are here amongst us now and in functional control of the entire planet. So this is, this is not a, a small thing. It's not a minor point. We have serious okay. obstacles, and that's part of it. All right. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read Jimmy's uh, bio. Uh, and this is from Wikipedia. And I'll put the link down below. It's probably going to be uh, part of this will be in the beginning of this video. So you could read it there, too. But I just wanted to read it for the people. Because I do make MP3s of these uh, interviews so that they can he actually listen to the bio. So that's why I'm doing it. Okay, uh, Sir James w uh, Wilson Vincent Seville, or otherwise known as Jimmy Seville, uh, was, he was born in 1926. He passed away in October of t 2011. He was an English uh, disc jockey, television and radio personality, a dance hall manager, and charity fundraiser. He hosted the BBC tele television show, Jimmy Will Fix It, and was the first and last presenter on the long-running uh, BBC music chart show, Top of the Pops and raised an estimated 40 million pounds for charities. At the time of his death, he was widely praised for his personal qualities as a fundraiser. After his death, hundreds of allegations of sexual, sexual abuse were made against him, leading the police to believe that Seville had, had been a predatory sex offender, possibly one of Britain's most prolific. There had been allegations during his lifetime, but they were dismissed and accusers ignored or disbelieved. Seville took legal action against some accusers. Seville was conscripted to work in the coal mines as a Bevan boy during the Second World War, reportedly sustaining spinal injuries at age 14. He began a career playing records in and later managing dance halls and was said to have been the first disc jockey to use twin turntables to keep the music in constant play. His media career started as a disc jockey at the Radio Luxembourg in 1958 and on Tyne T's TV television in 1960. He developed a reputation for eccentricity and flamboyance. At the BBC, he presented the first edition of the Top of the Pops in 1964 and broadcast it on Radio 1 from 1968. From 1975 until 1994, he presented Jimmy Will Fix It, a popular television program in which he arranged for the wishes of viewers, mainly children, to come true. During his lifetime, he was noted for fundraising and supporting charities and hospitals, in particular, Stoke Manville Hospital in Aylesbury, Leeds General Infirmary, and Broadmoor Hospital in Berkshire. In, tw in 2009, he was described by The Guardian as a prodigious philanthropist and was honored for his charity work. He was awarded the OBE in 1971 and was knighted in 1990. In October 2012, almost a year after his death, a TV documentary examined claims of sexual abuse by Seville and led to extensive media coverage and a substantial and rapidly growing body of witnesses and statements of sexual abuse claims, including accusations against public bodies for covering up or failure of duty. Scotland Yard launched a criminal investigation to allegations of child sex abuse 
by Seville spanning six decades, describing him as a predatory sex offender and later stating that they were push pursuing more than 400 lines of inquiry based on testimony of the 300 potential victims via 14 police forces across the United Kingdom. By late October 2012, the scandal had resulted in inquiries or reviews at the BBC with the National Health Service and the Crown Prosecution Service and the Department of Health. In June 2014, investigations into Seville's activities at 28 NHS hospitals, including Leeds General Infirmary and Broadmoor Psychiatric Hospital, concluded that he had sexually assaulted staff and patients aged between 5 and 75 throughout several decades. In January 2013, a joint report by the NSPCC and Metropolitan Police, giving victims a voice, stated that 450 people had made complaints against Seville, with the period of alleged abuse stretching from 1955 until 2009, and the ages of the complaints at the time of the assaults was ra ranged from 8 years old to 47 years old. The suspected victims included 28 children aged under 10 years old, 10 boys aged as young as 8, and a further 68 were girls between 13 and 16 years old, and nearly three quarters of alleged victims were under 18. Some uh, 214 criminal offenses were recorded with, it, with 34 rapes having been reported across 28 police forces. So um, that's from Wikipedia. Um, I, you know, I don't really consider this to be the be end all end all of like bios and whatnot, but it's just readily available for most people uh, to, to read and follow up as they wish. Um, uh, we're gonna have some questions here that might kind of, uh, um, you know, flesh this out. I'm not. I'm not really thrilled with some of the stuff, the way that uh, Wikipedia goes about this, but that's my problem. Um, so, uh, with that, Carl, um, I invite you to have any any more explanations about what we're going to do, and then uh, then I'd ask you to go ahead and get started, and we'll get we'll go with the questions. I've got seven questions for Jimmy today. Okay. Well, I am a trance channeler, so I go into a certain state of consciousness to prepare myself to make the connection. I work with the divine realm to set up safety around the work for everyone involved. And I go directly to creator and ask creator to connect me to the consciousness of the target. And that is done by creator. And it comes with the uh, the courtesy of having a kind of translator that allows me to communicate with any kind of being or level of consciousness, uh, human or otherwise. And, and so we'll be talking with this gentleman in the light as a light being now. So I expect this will be a quite interesting excursion uh, in terms of what we just heard about this fellow. Uh, I do reach out to many people with uh, interesting past histories and troubled pasts and so on. So I'm not shy about this, and my experience is they are not either, and they have things to teach us, so we'll see. Okay. All right. Thanks, Carl. It'll just take me a moment to get going here. Okay. This is Jimmy Seville. You may call me Jimmy, as all my friends have. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you for joining us. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about your incarnation as Jimmy Seville? Where can I begin? This is a most interesting turn of events. It is much like flipping something on its opposite side and seeing it from an entirely differing perspective. My life was not who I truly am. It is on record for all to see and look at with shock and alarm. And that is true for me now, looking back on all I was involved with. The crimes attributed to me are all true for the most part. And this was 
my doing and I take full responsibility. What I can tell you that will be of interest for your purposes and of interest and value for others to hear is not the tawdry details nor my pleas for understanding and forgiveness. Although forgiveness will help greatly for me to advance from where I find myself now. The first thing to note is I am truly back in the light and with the loving creator. And the reason for this is all of creators, humans, are a part of the family. All are treasured, all are loved, and all are forgiven by creator, no matter what they might do or not do. The idea of condemnation, judgment, banishment, and consignment to eternal torment is not ever the doings of creator. It is a false notion entirely to frighten people and drive them away from creator. This serves the darkness and is an obvious ploy if you understand and accept creator being entirely based on love. So any human who does not exhibit those qualities is under the influence of the darkness in one way or another to some extent. And this can be a profound enveloping and corruption. That was the case with me in my life and is a quite common tale. Preying on others is not human because human is a divine being and the committing of crimes serves the darkness and is caused by the darkness. The corrupted inclinations to indulge oneself at the expense of another always has encouragement from outside influence. And most of the time, this is the dark spirits. This is what befell me. So this is not to save myself, to save my soul. My soul has never been at risk. It has only been subject to the woundings. I cause it, and I myself must find ways to heal. I have Creator's support in this and have received healing from Creator a number of times, even during my recent life. But there is much still left to do that remains my burden to see to. And the ability to talk with you is helping in that regard because part of my restitution will come through spreading information and divine truth about all such doings. And in this small way, I can begin to repay the pain I have caused so many by preying on them. This is a huge, huge karmic debt. And I say this as a warning to all engaged in such selfishness. What happens to bring this about is to stir within the sexual impulse and misdirect it towards a darker implementation than would normally be the case. And when that line is crossed to take advantage of another, in particular a child, this is an act of immorality by intruding on the free will 
and in the course of doing so, causing soul wounds to that individual, which may take many, many years, and in often cases, and in many cases, multiple lifetimes, once wounded and victimized in this fashion, it predisposes that individual to be wounded again. This can be manipulated and exploited by dark beings to seek out such individuals as softer targets and help to bring together perpetrators with prior victims to continue things, to continue the pattern of victim perpetrator. And this can go on through the centuries, in fact, with a revisitation of the same kind of torment again and again. This drags down both perpetrator and victim. This was the track I was on in my recent incarnation. And this was set in motion by a prior lifetime serving the darkness in a different way to become a perpetrator under their direction and cause trouble for other humans. This is something they do always. Every act of human against another is orchestrated by them on some level, directly or indirectly. So there is much in my history needing repair. And the reason I gave in to those inner inclinations was because of corruption by spirit attachments on board my energy intruding into my thoughts, stirring up the prior karma, which was one of service to the darkness, and in resurrecting that programming for obedience was an easy target for them to push over the edge and begin to indulge my sexual urges in taking advantage of one victim and then another and then another and becoming adept in choosing the target and keeping things quiet. And this was a major erosion of my free will, but the karmic disposition being my responsibility is no excuse. So no one is saved from themselves automatically and pays no penalty as a result of divine forgiveness. That is only the beginning, the ability to be raised up enough to go back into the fray and to begin finding a path to healing within the realm of other humans in the physical with the intention and soul plan to do better to make restitution through acts of kindness and love and to stay above temptation and thereby begin to heal the old karmic pattern this is what all must do with this type of history. It is a human weakness because of the strength of the sexual impulse and it is easily corrupted and there are always many past lifetimes when this happened. We have all been involved for the most part in prior lives where there was less oversight, less civil recognition of responsibility and respect for women in particular, and 
children were considered as much property of their guardians as soul-based beings needing protection from subjugation and exploitation. So there have been cultural leanings towards the covering up of depravity and ignoring such activities as not being one's business. But we can tell you it is always the business of creator to see love reign and love to be the driving force and the ongoing moment to moment experience of all in the living. This needs to change across society with further awakening of the real cause, the true cause of all of this criminality and depravity. Whenever one is preying on a child, there are always spirit meddler influences involved. This is particularly apparent in the case of incest, where not only are there the age differences and the vulnerability to a powerful adult figure making them easy prey, but the taboo against sexual thoughts and impulses acted out with one's own blood being quite powerful and part of the overall pattern and inner understanding and awareness genetically, karmically, and spiritually. So this is a striking example of the power of the dark to corrupt people and make them turn against their own loved ones. Society needs to awaken to this understanding. And if I can be of service here, my hope is that it will be a voice that is heard and listened to. Okay, thank you. Um, some of the questions that I had uh, slated to ask have been answered in this, uh, with the answer to this first question. Uh, so I'll be skipping ahead. Are rehabilitation centers and children's homes in the United Kingdom connected to energy harvesting taking place in the fourth dimension? 